What's good you guys? Dark Cosmic here back with another astrology video. This time we're going to be talking about Gemini rising. <clears throat> so if you have Gemini in the first house, uh, Mercury in the first house, uh, this video will, will more than likely apply to you. Now, I want to address a few things because people have been watching my videos and they're commenting about uh, different placements that they have that don't that don't necessarily align to the houses like you let's say I say you have um, cancer in the second house but then and you have a Gemini ascendant and I say that you're supposed to have cancer in the second house but you check on your chart and you don't have that you have another planet or you have two of the same sign etc etc look if you want me to do a chart reading for you guys, I can for a fee. Otherwise, this is just the natural layout that it should be in. Everybody might have a different, uh, a slightly different uh, thing going on in their chart that changes it because everybody's different. And some people have like overlapping houses. Um, the point is. The only way I can help you is by actually doing a personal reading because I'm not doing a personal uh, reading for you guys. So these aren't going to be across the board accurate. It's just going to be accurate for the majority of people who are who are right smack in the um, at the degrees that it needs to be for it to be similar to the um, to the way it naturally is. So but majority of people fall into that category. So some people aren't going to relate to this and. That's okay if you want a reading i can do a reading for you guys for a fee so but otherwise you know don't think or move on to another video do your own research on the ascendant signs but anyway that's enough on that so with gemini ascendant what's, what's what do we have here so what i like to do is i like to go into the the uh 12th house to see what you guys what what energies you guys are dealing with in your um subconscious mind so subconsciously, you guys have the sign Taurus in the 12th house. So subconsciously, you guys are very um, nurturing. Subconsciously, you guys are survivors. Subconsciously, you guys are, you guys love food. You guys probably snack a lot subconsciously and not even realizing it. You guys are always like uh, eating food, have food in your car food hidden somewhere subconsciously and you do these things uh, to comfort yourself subconsciously you guys are very uh, stubborn you might not even notice it yourselves but you're a very very stubborn individual this is you on a subconscious level subconsciously you guys are um, very in tune with the world and very in tune with planet earth itself because Taurus rules this the rules earth so, um, and subconsciously, you guys are very beautiful people. Taurus is also Venus. Uh, it's the mother planet. Subconsciously, you guys are very motherly as well. Um, I would say this too that subconsciously, you guys, you guys don't deal with, with too much chaos. Like, so your appearance may be a, a sporadic, bizarre person that's multiple personalities or whatever. But subconsciously, you're very fixed and uh, mentally stable, unlike what people might think. So now let's go back to the first house, Gemini in the first house. Your personality is very curious. Your personality is very childlike. Your personality is uh, a bit similar to a bit of a know-it-all. People think you're a know-it-all sometimes. Um, what else? Uh, you come off as a, a writer type. You come off as a jack of all trades. You come off as an individual that has multiple talents, uh, especially when dealing with the hands. Uh, you come off as an artist. You come off as a musician. You come off as many things, uh, not not just one thing, but many things. So people perceive you to be uh, a person that talks a lot and can do a lot of things, but probably isn't very really good at all of them. You're just, you can, you reach a certain level at every single one of those things, but you don't quite master any of them, so. 
or you are. You, if you're a higher level Gemini, then you probably are really are a jack of all trades and you have mastered every trade that you've set your on your hands on. So depends on the individual. So um, people people perceive you to be a gossip too, and they really perceive you to be too talkative sometimes and too childish, too much on the bullshit, joking around too much, not taking anything seriously. Uh, and you probably have the appearance of a very, uh, you probably look very young. If you're a guy, you probably don't have that much facial hair. If you do, you just have the aura of an individual that's really young and innocent. Not innocent like take advantage of them, innocent, innocent. Innocent like you just don't, you don't look old and worn out like other people would. So Pisces Ascent is the one more like innocent looking like they could be taken advantage of. Gemini is just more like you just look young. So, okay, so that's the first house, and that's your personal life, especially. Uh, these things, everything I just said, it affects your personal life the most, more than anything. So the people in your personal life are the ones that, uh, that think this about you the most. Okay, so let's go to the second house. So in the second house, you guys have cancer. So when it comes to your survival, when it comes to uh, how you guys... How you guys uh, build your money, uh, build wealth. Um, you guys require uh, nourishment. You guys require. Let's see, when it comes to your, your survival, your mother probably plays a big role in that. Hold on. Pardon me. Your mother probably plays a big role in your survival. Your mother. Um, you probably are always focused on the survival of your mother. Um, the way you survive or the way you help others survive is by nurturing them so the way you need to the way you want to, to uh to the way you need what you need to survive is um nurturing you know affection uh, being taken care of sometimes you might come off as an individual that needs to be taken care of or it's the opposite. You sometimes you come off as a person that's nurturing and taking care of others all the time. It's one or the other, and this is this is and this is how you see survival needs to be uh, done. So survival to you guys is taking care of people like a nurse would. You know, somebody gets a cut, you're there with a bandage. Somebody's hungry, you're there to feed them. You wait, waiting on people hand and foot like a mom would, a caring mother. That's what you guys perceive survival to be. Survival is having a home, um, a well taken care of home, a home where everybody wants to go to and they feel like they're at home. That's survival to you guys. Um, or, or if it's not, if it's not for your sake, you're doing that for others, for the sake of others' survival. And. Um, you know, you guys really know how to make other people feel at home. So, let's go to the the third house. So, the third house, you guys have Leo. So, the reason why you guys have Leo in the third house is because you the third house is all about communication, uh, short distance traveling. It's about logic, thinking. Uh, it's about the hands. It's the house of Gemini. So the reason why you have Leo here is because you shine here. This is where you shine the most. So in the third house, people perceive you to be extremely flamboyant, extremely dramatic, extremely outgoing, extremely proud and prideful when it comes to the third house matters. When it comes to your personal travel, when it comes to your communication, you're very prideful about those things. Um, nobody can know more than you. You probably really think you know more than other people, and you and it's, you have a pride on that. So, and you're proud of that, or you respect people that know a lot of stuff. Vice versa, it can go either way. So, if you don't if you don't associate yourself with the proud energy, you probably are the one who is it just admiring somebody with the energy versus being proud yourself. It doesn't really matter which side you're on, you know. I don't know why people wear it, a badge of honor, like, oh, I'm not proud. Like, who cares? You can be proud of yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Or you can be proud of somebody else. Whatever. Whatever floats your boat. But. So that's why you guys have Leo in the third house is because you're, you're the most uh, 
talkative ascendant sign. So, of course, you're going to have the proud, bright, shiny, look at me sign in the third house. So, um, so in the fourth house, you guys have Virgo. So when it comes to your home, your home life, uh, your mother, um, it's a very logical environment. Your home life is very, very routine, based around routines and logic. Um, your family probably have routines that you always engage in, or your family force you to be engaging into their routines. Your mother uh, created routines for you, um, or you have a routine with your mother that you're willing to do, one or the other. Either your mother creates a routine and you're probably reluctant to do it, but she, you listen to her anyway, or you are in a routine with your mother. You got something that you do with your mother on an almost damn near daily basis, or your mother forces her way into doing that with you on a daily basis. Whether that's communication, you guys going to gym together, something to do with that, with your mother and routine. Or something to do with your family and routine, one or the other. Uh, the way your, your family shows nourishment, or the, or, um, the way your, your family shows, the way your family shows that they're a family towards you, or the way you 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 uh, communicate being a family member towards your family is uh, through engaging with them with these routines, through engaging in logical, practical communication. Um, you know, making sure that everybody's looking clean, making sure that everybody's room is clean. This is how you guys. This is how you guys bond as a family. Virgo type of things, judging things, crit criticizing things. This is how you guys. You know, you might debate each other all the time. This is how you guys, you guys want to be in a critique, judging, analytical uh, type of energy. And this is how you guys show that you're a family. This, guy, this is how you show love to each other. This is how love is received to you. It's through, in a Virgo type of way. Um, so, some people might perceive your home life to not be very loving, but to you, this is the best thing ever. Or to you, it might not be at all. Maybe you're the Gemini sign that hates being in that hated being in that type of environment, being in such a strict, logical, practical, and um, just a, just an environment where you, you there's no room for fantasy and daydreaming. So maybe you were the Gemini Sun that didn't like that, or maybe you're the one that loved that, and you remember that fondly. So um, let's go to the fifth house. So in the fifth house, you guys have Libra. So, the zodiac sign Libra represents balance, Venus, uh, love, um, romance, justice. So, um, when it comes to your romance, um, you guys, romance to you is one-on-one uh, -on -one bonding with somebody. Romance to you is um, the beautiful things in life, arts, creative, fashion, um, the finer things in life, but above all else, uh, everything that's feminine, everything Venusian. So, um, and if your partner is able to bring that to you, you will fall in love with that individual, whoever is uh, Libra-like. So, so to you guys, Gemini ascendants uh, tend to, to date or tend to fall in love with people that are more artistic in nature, or just uh, a little bit eccentric, feminine, Feminine males and uh, extremely, extremely feminine women. And when I say feminine males, I don't, that doesn't mean that they're uh, flam, like flimsy and weak. It just means that they, they have, uh, they're closer to their feminine nature. They're, they are more like healer type people, or artists, or um, you know, they, they could even be in carpentry. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be something so. Uh, soft and delicate it doesn't have to be like that. it can be something tough but it, it has some kind of artistry in it and and they somehow with their manly energy are able to create beauty out of that so that's for women you know that's what gemini ascendant women tend to go after um your children because the um it, fifth house not only represents your you your um romance but it also represents your um your children and entertainment so your children uh, might perceive you to be an artistic person, or the, uh, or you might have 
bunch of children that are artists um, or, or feminine like children you, the boys you have are going to be a little bit feminine, feminine and, the, and the girls that you have are going to be extremely feminine um, like I said it's not a bad thing the boys are, he's a little feminine doesn't mean I use that word meaning that they just carry more feminine energy which just means that they're more they're more creative they're more they're more in the right brain area some of the most uh, right brain males are very influential like Shakespeare Kurt Cobain you know artists musicians out there that are very very impactful but these are clearly extremely right brain males you could say that they're feminine twice um, you know feminine type males but uh, point being that's 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 how it is with your kids your kids might also perceive you to be very fair um, you want to back to the partner though the, to the romance too, you want a partner that's very fair too you don't want somebody that's unfair and you approach the relationship in a very fair way you know like you probably you don't wait for your partner to pay the bill or if you're the type that's really about chivalry, chivalry and and all that and you really subscribe to that mentality then you will you, you will uh, make them pay the bill but a lot of times with Libra in the fifth house romance to you is supposed to be fair so you guys are both pick, picking uh, paying half of the bill to you you know or you're doing something that compensates for that so you're doing something else so even though they're paying the bill you're doing this over here one or the other you guys want it to be fair you don't ever want to leave the relationship feeling like you drained somebody you want to leave the relationship knowing you gave it your side and they did their side and that was it that's how libra libras think i guess so let's go to the sixth house the sixth house you guys have scorpio so in your work environment you guys are per perceived to be very secretive sexual uh powerful hypnotic erotic uh, mesmerizing individuals okay so now this can also mean that you guys are in a work environment that deals a lot with secrets and sex you guys might probably are in um, you guys are probably in a work environment in which you guys are doing a lot of heavy research um, trying to find something out, trying to learn something about uh, something that's really secretive. You guys might be sex, uh, sexual counselors. You guys might be counselors for uh, child child uh, molestation victims. You guys might be um, you guys might be in the porn industry. Um, what else? Um, or you guys are probably dealing with a lot of sexual advances at, at your work, in your work environment. Um, what else? Uh, or you guys have secret uh, secret jobs that you guys partake in that nobody else nobody knows about. You might have a job that nobody else kind of like Tommy from Martin. Like, what does Tommy do? <laughs> nobody could ever figure that out. They always thought that Tommy had no job. He would make money somehow, and he would always say he has a job, but he doesn't. In their eyes, he doesn't really have a job because he can never tell them what it was. So. But yeah, like I said, it, um, the work environment is full of secret sex and uh, deep research. You guys might be detectives, or you might have an interest to be in detectives, and, and that's a routine for you guys. You routinely do a lot of research, you routinely think about sex, you routinely think about the secrets of life. It's a, it's a part of your routine, some way, somehow. So let's go to the seventh house. In the seventh house, you guys have Sagittarius. Um, so seventh house deals with relationships, marriage. Um, it also deals with business partnerships. So um, you guys want a partner that's full of full of adventure, full of experiences, full of wisdom, full of um, full of. Uh, just the ability to talk to you guys and bring meaning to whatever it is that you guys know because you guys feel like you know a lot but sometimes you you lack depth in what it is that you know you just kind of know all these facts you've done all this research and everything but you, you you never really go quite too deep in it so when you find somebody that has gone extremely deep on these sides of life you, you guys uh you can fall in love with these individuals as well people that are really deep um, the, the friends that you guys make, generally speaking, the business partners that you make, generally speaking, travel a lot or are people that have a lot of wisdom. 
your friends, to you, your friends are very wise people. Um, to you, your friends are very preachy type people. To you, your friends travel a lot. Um, maybe, or this may be a thing, or may not be a thing, but in generally speaking, that you might perceive your friends to be like that. Um, or you just want to make friends that are like that. So, um, what else? That's about it for that. Let's go to the eighth house. So in the eighth house, you guys have Capricorn. So when it comes to sex, um, Capricorns are Capricorn is a really dry. <laughs> it's a really dry and um, practical sign. So in sex, you guys probably are very detached. In sex, you guys. To, to you guys, sex is just a, uh, it's either one or the other. It's either it's a really passionate experience in which you get to finally not be so cold and detached from somebody, or B, you guys don't really get into it like other people do. To you, it's just an act that, you know, to just get it over with, really. Not saying that you don't enjoy sex, but for the most part, to you, it's not really, it's not really like, it's not as deep as it is to somebody else that would have a more emotional sign in this house. So to you guys, sex, you guys probably have sex with a lot of people and not care, you know, not care about any of them. Not have, you know, no feelings caught over here. Having Capricorn in the eighth house, ain't no feelings being caught. Extreme detachment. It's similar to Aquarius energy here. So, um, what else? Um, eighth house deals with uh, transformation. So the things that transform transform you guys is business. The things that transform you guys is hard work. Um, the things that transform you guys is, is status. So one when you're you guys seek to uh, transform your status a lot. You guys don't like where you're at in life, and that's what you guys do for the most part. You guys are always trying to transform your status. You guys are always trying to transform the way that you you go about rising to the top. Um, or your status changes you. You guys might reach a point where you're doing good and that actually changes you. People probably think you change for good or bad, whatever. Um, this also deals with inheritance, um, with an inheritance. So, um, I'd say with Capricorn here, you guys might inherit something from a business. A business gives you some kind of inheritance. Um, or an entrepreneur in your life gives you something that you always needed, one or the other. Um, I think that's about it on the eighth house. So let's go to the ninth house. So the ninth house, you guys have Aquarius. So when it comes to your wisdom and your traveling, you guys are very fixated uh, and detached. Um, so you guys, and you're also really unique. So the things that you know in, in regards to wisdom, you guys might have wisdom, but it's really unique. It's really fixed and it's really detached. So stuff that you guys know, it's, it's, it's wisdom, but it's not like the, the general wisdom that everybody else, else would know. It's, it would just be like random things that you guys gain wisdom off of. Really random, strange things that you might learn wisdom from. So... You might be able to give somebody advice on, I don't know, um, just strange things. Strange things that people really, they probably wouldn't need that advice, but you, for some reason, have the ability to give them that, that advice. And you're fixated on those type of things. And you guys, you guys lack the knowledge of seeing that that's not always wisdom. Because wisdom is sometimes stuff that you, you, it has to be a little more broad than that. It's not, it can't be so fixed like that, so... What else? Aquarius in the ninth house. Um, you guys like to travel to places that are really bizarre. Um, and that's where you guys will get wisdom from. So you, you'll travel to strange, strange strange parts of the world or strange parts of your town. And this is where you get your wisdom from. For, again, this is what I'm trying to say. Like, Getting wisdom from that is not really always going to be wise. Because it's like nobody probably ever going to deal with that stuff you're dealing with. In those strange locations that you're at. So it's kind of like... It's not wisdom, bro. 
that's funny to know and good to know and that, that's fascinating that you've got so much experience in that but that's not really wisdom to them that's not gonna be really really wisdom but um that's all i would say on that um let's go to the 10th house so in the 10th house you guys have pisces so in your status people perceive you to be very creative and dreamy um in your career people perceive you to be very creative and dreamy i mean um you probably are in a career in which you are are free to be creative and dreamy you're probably in a career where you are you can be a healer you're probably in a career where so you might be a nurse might be into reiki uh, any career in which you can be in a dream world and, and be able to be creative that's for you i keep saying that sorry but um basically Basically, everything that deals with, deals with Pisces in your career and rising to the top. This is how you, you, you rise to the top is by um, acting on these traits of being a creative and dreamy type. So It's often that you guys are found in fields of artistry or, or healing arts. One or the other. Um, so let's go to the 11th house. So in the eleventh house, you guys have Aries. So your best friends can be Aries, and the reason for this, the reason for eleventh house being in Aries and your best friends being Aries is because Aries is the sign of the baby. Aries is the sign of being youth. So next to, to some of the most childish zodiac signs is Aries and um, Gemini. I'd say Sagittarius is like right there as well. So, your best friends are Aries because they always trying to start shit. They're very fiery, passionate, and childlike. So that's, that's what makes uh, Aries your very, could be your buddies here. And it's a sextile as well. Which means you guys, you guys have something that the other one doesn't, and it balances out. So, um, <clears throat> what else is gonna say? The 11th house is all, also about groups and organizations. So the types of groups that you guys tend to join for the most part are groups that are full of passionate leader, leader-like individuals, people that like to go out, people like to work out, people, are, people that are probably into racing cars, uh, or just overall people that are just really passionate about things. The, team, the groups that you are in, you will notice that you are surrounded by a bunch of passionate-ass people, intense people, uh, people with short tempers. can't put my I can't I can't really say exactly what kind of group that would be but you just I guess you just have to look at your life and finally the 12th house which I already explained um, having Taurus here makes your subconscious mind very stable so uh, although your appearance and your personality may come off as an individual that's very mutable and changing and, and just not consistent at all, your, your subconscious mind is very stable. So don't let people make people, um, let people think, don't let people trick you into thinking that you're crazy, sorry. Because you're really not. Subconsciously, you guys are very stable. Subconsciously, you guys are very practical. And you guys are, you guys are really well-versed in routine. Just like I said, because in the, in, the, in the fourth house, you guys had Virgo. So you're very well-versed in routine. You're very well-versed in being stable and consistent. You guys, subconsciously, you guys can't, I, or you might have a side of you that is both chaos and both um, both chaos and stability. So um, don't let people, you know, make you think you're crazy because you, there's a place in you that is stable. There's a place in you that is consistent, and it's there. You just gotta remember that. Remember how you grew up. Remember how you found stability. Okay, so this is my Gemini Ascendant video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, like I said, if you don't have the placement. You know what I'm saying? I can do a reading for you. Otherwise, this is just the basic uh, layout that it would naturally fall into.